Christina. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to this American Library Association webinar, Preparing Your Library for the 2020 Census. Um, and I'm Karen Brown, and I'm fortunate to be working with ALA on some of its census awareness and engagement activities, and I'll be moderating this webinar. Uh, just my other hat, though, is also as a faculty member at the School of Information Studies at Dominican University just outside of Chicago. But I want to, first of all, introduce presenters for today. We've got a stellar panel of presenters and give you kind of a snapshot of what we're going to be covering in the program. Uh, we'll start first with Lara Clark, who is Deputy Director, PLA and Public Policy and Advocacy at ALA. And she's going to provide an overview of the 2020 Census and highlight some roles for libraries. Next will be Kathy Hartz, and she is Portfolio Manager Academics uh, with the National Partnership Program at the Census Bureau. And she's going to cover some of the ins and outs of working with what are called census partnership specialists and just general guidelines for partnering with the census. Then hopefully we will get Anita uh, Banerjee uh, connected. She is director of the Democracy Initiative at Forefront, and Forefront is an Illinois statewide association that represents both grant makers and nonprofits. And she has worked with libraries and will discuss some strategies for approaching funding organizations and groups. Uh, then we're very fortunate that a number of libraries um, have been engaged in offering programs and services related to the census and ha have been thinking about the funding that is required to make those programs and services and events happen. Uh, we're fortunate to have librarians and staff of two organizations who are going to talk about what they're doing at their libraries and what libraries in their states are doing. First, uh, Rhonda Sewell is Manager and external of External and Government Affairs at Toledo Lucas County Public Library, and she'll be joined with uh, Deborah Barnett, who is the library's brand new, just uh, recently came on board, the library's 2020 Census Coordinator and involved in the Toledo Lucas County Complete Count Committee. Uh, and then from the Georgia Public Library Service, Wendy Corneliuson, uh, who is Assistant State Librarian, and Emily Almond, the Chief Technology Officer, will be talking about some of the activities going on in their state. And finally, though, we want to make sure that we leave time for your questions and so have set aside some time for doing that as well. So. Lara, at this uh, point, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. And at this, you're, you're muted, so you need to make sure you're unmuted. Yes, I was going to say the first job I have then is to unmute my mic. Okay. Hopefully that will only happen once while we're all here. Thanks again, um, everyone, for joining us. Um, I'm very excited to be here with all of you as, as well as our other presenters. Um, the ALA, Public Policy and Advocacy Office, and PLA have been working with our Joint Task Force um, to gather materials and develop training um, with Karen um, for almost two years now. And we've learned a lot along the way from many of you. And, um, and we're beginning to share out this work via the webinars. This is our second, um, and there will be another one in December and an, at least one more after that. So we'll, we'll keep sharing information and adding information on our webpage. Um, so I am going to click right through some background, which many of you probably know, you're here so you're already thinking about preparing for the census so some of this will already be known to you so I will go through it quickly number one obviously the census is important because it's in the Constitution and it counts every person in the US once and only once and in the right place um, which sounds like it should be easier than I think we actually find it to be and I'll talk about that in a minute um, 
this is essential for our federal funding, our political representation, including the electoral college and redistricting, and then as well for informed decision making, as all librarians know, because you get asked about this data all the time um, in terms of people developing business plans and, and nonprofits and others trying to understand their community. I know in Illinois, we are facing the loss of one or more of our congressional seats. So this has been really important for us in thinking about in this state in preparing for the census and making sure no one is missed. So the other thing that's really important about this um, a little bit deeper is that it's critical, the census data is critical for determining state and local funding from federal programs. Um, that includes everything from Medicaid to school funding to roads to um, SNAP and public housing, um, all these programs that support uh, many of the people that are most vulnerable in our community as well as our shared infrastructure. And unfortunately, the number that we collect in 2020 sticks for 10 years. So an undercount really has lasting impacts if we don't get it right. So here's what it looks like. Oh, Karen, sorry, you need to, there we go. There's a, the local funding, uh, 800 billion plus um, each year in terms of an impact um, of funding that's connect, connected to the data and then multiply that by 10 years. Uh, the next slide talks um, a little bit about who is at greatest danger for being mis undercounted. And this has been been true in previous census, um, you know, particularly people who are not proficient in English, who may be experiencing homelessness, and interestingly, uh, young children, even folks that complete the census sometimes may not include all the people in their household, uh, particularly are, you know, babies and toddlers, um, and also in complex families. And we have a new tip sheet out that is on our website um, for folks who would like to learn a little bit more about that. But there's a lot of people in communities that are also potentially most affected by lost funding or political representation if we miss them. Um, so there's a lot at stake every 10 years. So how will the census work? Um, this is the next slide. Um, just in terms of timing, um, it's, it seemed like we were far, far away and now we're really right up on it. Um, that the mailings will go out on in the middle of March. Um, April 1st is census day, so that's when if you have a newborn, if they're born on April 1st or the day before they count in the 2020 census, if they're born on April 2nd, they do not count in the 2020 second. 2020 census. Um, so that's a big marker for this activity. And it's also the time for the self response. And that's when you're likely to hear the most from people in your community is, is that mid April through the mid March to the end of April. And then the Census Bureau will begin its work to uh, reach out to households that have not yet completed their self-response. The census takes about 10 minutes. Um, there's very few questions and it's confidential and protected um, in our legislation. So I'm gonna talk just a couple of minutes about what it means for all of you in particular. Um, this is the first year where there is an online self-response option. Um, we still do have people, still do have the ability to respond by paper or by phone. Um, so that's good news, but we know that every time a government um, process or any process moves online, that it has an impact, particularly on public libraries, but other libraries that pr provide public access as well. Um, the job applications, to apply to work for the census is also online, um, as is the training. So all of these are areas that could have impacts for library computers and public access. Um, we had a webinar a, a little bit ago um, talking about that. So if you have an interest in that and missed the first webinar that was about a week or two ago, um, we do have an archive of that. So look for that. Um, obviously, accurate data makes a difference for us and all the people that we serve. Um, it makes sure that all of the programs that I mentioned earlier, as well as the Library Services Technology Act funding that is population based and supports um, grants to states, um, that is directly affected as well. So if your state doesn't have a complete count, that will affect library funding, like federal library funding in your state. And then also the opportunity in terms of workforce development to, um, oh wait, Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Um, 
and um, and that lots of people also will be asking questions and wanting to make sure like what does this what does this mean and why should I participate? So there's uh, an opportunity to inform and educate the community as well. Thanks, now I'm ready. Um, so in terms of how libraries can help achieve a complete count, um, there are several things. Um, one is what this webinar is about and also what all of the materials on our website, ala.org backslash census are there for, is to help answer questions and make sure that library staff are prepared and have the most complete and accurate information available. Um, Libraries can partner. We know this is already happening. Um, libraries are doing fantastic work um, with complete count committees in partnering uh, with Census Bureau officials, with local elected officials and community organizations. Um, people also can prepare for increased use of computers and the internet. We're understanding that people are buying additional tablets, which may make it easier for them to address um, response in their library, but also taking it out into the community on their bookmobile, for instance, um, and obviously sharing accurate information and programs and resources that will help keep this issue in front of people and help them understand why it's so important um, and making it easier for them to respond. So, the obvious question with all of this, and the last slide for me, or the next to the last slide, um, is are there resources available to support libraries' work? And this is our newest, uh, our newest tip sheet that all of you, that's on the website, and hopefully some of you have seen, and it's called Preparing My Library for the 2020 Census. It talks a little bit about what I just covered, but also specifically, um, is there funding or support to help libraries do this work? And the good news is that there is. Um, I would say that there probably is not enough um, that uh, what we hear from libraries is there's more that is needed to support their work. But um, there, the good news is that there is re there are some resources out there. Um, one, you should all know that the ALA has a mini grant program available now. The applications, the very short applications are due November 22nd. Um, the grants are for $2,000. We are only able to grant 25 of them, but, um, but I'm glad that we were able to secure funding to make some additional um, funding available. But foundations and um, organizations like Forefront Illinois, um, which is why I'm so glad that we have Anita here and I'm hoping she can um, she will have all of her audio so we can hear from her, um, are, are doing amazing work in states like Illinois. State and local government are directly supporting um, funding for library technology and other resources. In fact, if anybody is from Oklahoma, there also, there's actually a grant application that is due this Friday. So any Oklahomans here, um, this is a grant program supported by IMLS funding um, for up to $3,100. So um, Gavin, my trusty pal may put that in the, in the slides, but if not, I will, I will add it to the chat in a minute. Um, businesses, community organizations, including civic clubs, um, whether it's direct funding or it's support with materials or um, partnering um, to share the library message, um, these are all options that are available as well. And as anybody who's done fundraising, um, the people who are closest to you are often your most reliable supporters, and that may include your library friends group or foundation if you have those, that there may be an opportunity, particularly to, you know, have snacks at a library census program, for instance, where they can step in and um, provide support for the library's work in this area. And lastly, before I actually turn it over to um, our partner, um, our liaison at the Census Bureau, is that the Bureau has developed and is developing and sharing materials that can be downloaded. Um, they can help with speakers for events, there may, um, and messaging and other resources, and they are building their own library all the time. So that's another resource, and there are, um, regional census bureaus that you can reach directly, you know, in your region as well um, as the folks at the national office who we've been working with. So, 
here's my very last slide um, before I turn it over to Kathy. Um, some additional information and we will share, I think somebody had asked about handouts. I don't believe that we have handouts, but we will make available um, the slides, there will be an archive of this session and um, so all the slides will be there for yeah. people if you'd like to share them. Yeah, this is Karen, just real quick. Everybody will receive a link to the recording as well as the PowerPoint slides. Awesome. So that is, I'm going to, I'm going to stop there because we um, have a lot of great people that have direct experience doing this work and I am looking forward to hearing from them and hearing all your questions. So thank you for being here with us um, and for your work and supporting a complete and accurate count in the 2020 census. Great. Thank you, Lara. And Kathy, who is with the Census Bureau, um, can you tell us about partnering with the, the Census Bureau and partnership specialists? Sure. Um, thank you very much for having us. We always look forward to any type of webinar, uh, any opportunity to speak and engage with ALA. Uh, libraries are so critical uh, for the Census Bureau to be able to uh, secure an accurate count. So uh, it is with great appreciation. Uh, that all of you have joined the line today uh, for the webinar. And so we have uh, these group of uh, dedicated staff called partnership specialists. Some of you may have already uh, engaged with them or they may have stopped by for a visit just to explain a little bit about what they're there to do. Um, but they are there to help ensure that you have, uh, your community gets counted uh, and they will help you support, um, uh, provide support from local organizations. They'll be the conduit. So uh, if you are in need of um, particular materials, they are going to be able to uh, provide you some of those materials. They are also going to be able to point you to the website uh, where the promotional materials exist on the census at the Census Bureau. And I just posted that in the chat room. Uh, and so they're, they're there to help you. Um, partnership specialist, they'll probably ask you to become a, a partner. Um, and that is something that I would strongly support your doing. They are there to help you uh, to make sure you have all the resources that you need. Um, but most importantly, um, what I've been hearing uh, that have been most successful are that they are able to connect the dots to the other partners that they have. So if libraries are in need of uh, a particular resource, uh, they can look and think about the partners that they engage with on a regular basis, and they will be able to make introductions for you. Uh, and that sometimes is valuable when it comes to uh, if you need help with printing materials, uh, or if there's another need that you have for a special event that you're holding. And so um, it, we strongly encourage, if they have not reached out to you yet, as you can see on the slide, uh, there's a direct telephone number and an email address of the partnership office where you can, if you read, uh, identify your state and um, send them an email or give them a call. Um, and once you start going through the AR, ARC to um, uh, ask for a meeting, um, we are in the process still of hiring uh, the people for the position. We are hiring 1,500 and we have those majority of positions filled. What we have been hearing the most um, from uh, not just libraries, but across the, the nation is that some partnership specialists are better than others. Uh, and we understand that because of the hiring process, some are new, some are not. Uh, and so if you ever have any problems uh, with not having proper engagement or have any concerns, uh, my, my name and number is not on this list, but you're, uh, please, uh, Karen, share that email address. You're always welcome to reach out to me. Uh, and I can help things move along uh, in the region for you. So when you establish a, a contact with your partnership specialist, um, I would think some of the questions that you might wanna ask is what other contacts do they have with nonprofit organizations that are doing outreach uh, to the communities? That might be valuable because you will be able to, you might be able to coordinate. They might be somebody that you're already working with um, that you would want to collaborate with. Uh, we are, less than five months away and um, thinking about um, all the time that has been spent on preparing for 2020 and engaging with ALA starting last spring. Um, it's, we're running, um, it's exciting, 
uh, it's also a very nervous time to think that this is going to be happening incredibly quickly. So uh, as Lara said, I would strongly encourage you to reach out and engage your partnership specialist early um, so that if they have anybody else that you can collaborate with so you don't have to recreate the wheel, um, that they would be able to provide you that information. Um, you can also ask the partnership specialist, what are the plans? What have they done to reach out to uh, certain organizations or uh, hard to count groups that might be in your area? and see how you can collaborate with them or support those efforts uh, with the patrons that you serve that might come from those communities. Uh, and then also, most importantly, is what resources do we have? Uh, of course, we have all the print materials, but there's also promotional materials out there uh, in the regions that they can supply to you. They should be offering these to you. They're coming, uh, they're waves of the promotional items. And so if you ask uh, at the beginning of the relationship that you have with the partnership specialist, be sure to ask again in a month and say, do you have anything new for us? I know there are uh, bookmarks, notebooks, um, uh, pins, pens, uh, everything that um, we had during 2010, if you were there, uh, that we still have the same types of promotional items. Uh, if you run into a problem, again, just drop me a line and we'll see uh, what types of shipments we can get to the region so that they can supply you with these materials. Um, you might wanna ask the partnership specialist um, about uh, the complete count committees and could there be any uh, types of um, uh, help from them? So I stress that they are there to help you uh, fulfill the mission that you have or that you've taken on of becoming a trusted voice and serving your patrons on the importance of uh, responding to the census. Uh, they will be coming to libraries if they choose the online response. And um, I just, I thank you so very much for your willingness to help us secure this, this count because we just simply cannot do this uh, without the support of librarians. So, uh, I think I'm over my time, and uh, I just do appreciate uh, all the efforts that you're giving us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kathy. And uh, as we all know, technology can be awesome when it works well, but when it doesn't, it has a way of putting us in our place. And unfortunately, uh, we just haven't been successful with connecting Anita to the uh, to the Zoom platform. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna kind of go through her slides since they are right here, and I have to go through them to get to the next set, anyways. Um, and we're gonna try and think creatively about how we can pull Anita into a future webinar or similar event. And I know that uh, Lara, and what, you're gonna get a copy of all these slides so that you will also have an opportunity to see some of the links and some of the information. Okay, now I want, we're gonna hear from uh, some libraries and uh, state libraries that have been developing services and programs and thinking about uh, funding to support those programs. Uh, and that have been partnering with different organizations to support their census events. Um, I'm gonna ask Rhonda and Deborah to first talk about what's going on at Toledo Lucas County Public Library. And while they're talking, you can enjoy these beautiful photos of Toledo Lucas County Public Library. So uh, Deborah and Rhonda, make sure you unmute your mics and then uh, looking forward to hearing from you. See, Deborah, you're still muted. Can everyone hear us? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, we're so sorry about that delay. Okay. Hi, this is Rhonda Sewell, and I will um, introduce Deborah Barnett. We're so excited to have her as the 2020 Census Coordinator uh, based here at the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Thank you for putting up those beautiful slides of our library system. I'll just take a second to tell you a little bit about our system. We are a countywide system. Um, the Toledo Lucas County Public Library's annual budget ranges from about 42 to $48 million. 
Um, most of our funding comes from the state and we're happy to say that we had some bipartisan cooperation in the state and uh, they bumped us up from 1.68% to 1.7% of the general revenue fund, which funds all 251 public libraries in the state of Ohio. Uh, we have about 20 locations and four mobile units. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, uh, context about our library system. I manage governmental and external affairs for the system. I act as a library advocate working with lobbying law firms, um, advocacy at the state level and also at the local level with uh, our city of Toledo administration. We're based in Toledo for our main library headquarters, which you see to the left of the screen under our giant TL logo. Um, and that particular main library uh, just was renovated. And we're so glad um, to have our 2020 census coordinator based at our main library, which serves as our headquarters for all of our 19 branch locations. Um, the way we got involved with the 2020 census, we're obviously always involved with the census and play a major role, but because of um, this year being online um, via mail and also via uh, mobile or phone, um, we knew that public, as a public library, we would really um, play a major role in the 2020 census. So we were invited back in May by the city of Toledo and Toledo, Ohio's population is just under 300,000. Um, the Lucas County population, according to the 2010 census, is a little over 440,000. So that's um, the population we're dealing with. The county, um, Lucas County commissioners, the city of Toledo administration, and we have a local community foundation called the Greater Toledo Community Foundation got together to form a complete count committee. Um, and as you know, complete count committees are, are springing up all over uh, the nation. But in our area, those three entities got together, sent letters out to everyone who's anyone, various constituencies such as our health systems, uh, obviously the public library systems, our nonprofits, our head starts, our charter schools, our private and Catholic schools, and also of course our public schools, um, our unions, our faith-based um, groups, and we hold e monthly meetings every fourth Wednesday. And as we were um, discussing the complete count, and looking at different things such as activities that should take place, um, the city, the county, and the Greater Toledo Community Foundation um, said that we're going to put up monies to fund a 2020 census coordinator. Um, and so the library saw that as an opportunity to have that person be based at our main library to work out of the main library. So what we did is we entered into an independent contract agreement with who I'll introduce you to, Deborah Barnett. Um, and it was through our foundation. We have a foundation at our library called the Library Legacy Foundation. So they, we signed a contract with Deborah, who started just on November 4th, so she's brand new to our system and was just introduced this morning to our managers um, of all of our locations. Um, so in the contract, uh, she will work for um, about 12 months unless um, her duties are done um, and completed. Um, she will also give um, advice and a, and a written report at the end of her duties um, to give us uh, a lot of context and recommendations for the 2030 census. It seems odd to talk about that now, but 
you never can be too early to talk about uh, best practices. And um, we're just very, very happy to have her here. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to now turn it over to Deborah Barnett um, to introduce herself. She has a vast background in our community. Um, and we do, we have formed a steering team um, through our complete count committee, which is made up of all of the funders of the coordinator position. So if you're thinking about doing something similar, the library basically um, offered office space, a laptop, a phone, um, obviously supplies and um, things of that nature, but we do not fund um, her, her contract. So I just wanted to make that very clear. And without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Deborah Barnett, the 2020 Toledo Lucas County Census Coordinator. Debbie? Good afternoon, everyone. And I look forward to working with the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Um, just a little bit about my background. I am a retired bank executive. I worked for uh, the Huntington Bank for 32 years. 12 of those 32 years, I was their community relations officer. Uh, having that position afforded me uh, the opportunity to be very involved in the community by serving on various boards, even a four-year term as, a, as the Toledo Public School board member with a year of that being the president of the Toledo Public Schools. So I have um, served on uh, boards like the City of Toledo's uh, Community Development Board, their, their Homeless Board. I have uh, served on the um, Lucas, uh, not Lucas County, but the, um, excuse me, the Coleman Board uh, for Breast Cancer. So I have been very involved in the community and, for, and, and, and also I happen to love the community that I live in. So when um, the opportunity came to really first volunteer on the 2020 Complete Count uh, Committee, I thought it was because of my involvement in the community that I could lend my services and the relationships I have, have built over the last 12 years. Uh, my uh, motto is bringing together people, businesses, nonprofits, and resources to affect solutions and improve functioning is a value added that I will bring to the Toledo Lucas County Complete Count Committee efforts. So I look forward working um, diligently throughout the next 12 months, coordinating uh, different duties such as um, I will manage the day-to-day -day planning, coordination, and execution of local outreach efforts supporting local census activities. Uh, I will work with the federal, state, and local governments to coordinate activities to ensure that we make every effort in communicating the importance of counting all of our Toledo and Lucas County residents. Some of the activities that I had hit the ground running with is um, working with the faith-based community. I have a very uh, excellent relationship with many of the ministerial organizations. So I've had in the last week, I've been able to make presentations to those organizations in um, preparing them to help carry out that message of why it's important for everyone in Lucas County to be counted. Uh, I have uh, brainstormed and uh, with the staff here at the library, uh, we brainstorm on having census days and setting up training around those census days to ensure, like I saw on one of the slides, that the staff can answer the questions that our, um, our uh, community will come in and, and ask. Uh, uh, planning uh, an upcoming uh, community uh, event around uh, the MLK Unity Celebration. I'm going to work with the City of Toledo and the University of Toledo. Every year they have a Unity Day and that takes place on uh, Martin Luther King's uh, birthday. So we thought that was an opportunity to really, uh, in a loud way, 
at that event talk about the importance of, uh, of filling out your census. And uh, last but not least, working very closely with the very busy, hard to count subcommittee, who is, um, they are in the community finding out where these hard to count uh, clients are and working with different segments of the community. So those are just a few activities. Uh, I have contacted our, um, our uh, partnership specialist. Actually, I have a meeting with uh, her tomorrow. So um, much like um, the previous presenter shared, there is a lot of material and I'm going to go and meet with her to see all of the different kind of promotional items that we can stock here at the library. And I must say the library has been very welcoming to me in staffing me here and providing me with training with the new equipment and all of the things that libraries provide uh, the different communities. So I thank you uh, and I will answer any questions you might have. Great. Thank you both Rhonda and Debbie. So a lot is uh, happening and uh, a lot in the planning for Toledo Lucas County Public Library. So let's uh, move to Georgia and Wendy and Emily, do you wanna tell us what uh, Georgia has been doing? And make sure you've unmuted your mics. Uh, let's see. There we go. You should be able to hear me now. Yes, yes, we can. Hi, uh, this is Wendy Cornelson, Assistant State Librarian at the Georgia Public Library Service. Uh, we've had the, the great fortune of having a seat at the table for our state complete count committee since the spring of 2018, when some of those statewide quarterly meetings have started. Um, what, what I most appreciate about serving on the committee is the knowledge that our libraries don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, a point that Kathy was making earlier, there are statewide efforts for spreading the word. We don't have to create our own marketing tools or social media posts or videos or images. In Georgia, there's going to be ad campaigns that run on um, cable TV, on public broadcasting. There's going to be radio spots in English and in Spanish. There are YouTube media buys happening. Um, the State Complete Count Committee is putting out a toolkit starting in January that's really going to focus on um, personas. They've, they've picked 12 hard to count personas from across the state um, with ethnic and racial diversity, rural and urban diversity, really highlighting that, that hard to count population. Um, and it, being able to make a, that, that personal connection with people. There's another group that's creating videos with local leadership in 10 different South Georgia hard to count counties uh, across the state. It's, it, the libraries are being filming locations for these videos. So we've really been able to be sort of all involved um, in, in this work. Um, so Georgia will have those specific messages going out. There are also, of course, national efforts from the US Census that are gonna have very similar messages as well. There's gonna be a lot to choose from. And I think all of our libraries will be able to find that right fit for, for their particular communities. Um, and the next slide. The next thing we're really focused on here at GPLS is making sure that library staff are prepared to answer questions about the census, make sure they've got all the good information that they need and are able to do that warm handshake uh, with people who come in and wanna fill out the census to the census website, to that census phone number, um, starting in late March when those efforts begin. So that's kind of where our, our current thinking is going for the future in these few months that we have before the census begins. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. I'm gonna turn things over now to Emily Almond. Hello, everyone. Okay, that slide doesn't mean anything. So next slide. <laughs> 
I'm the uh, Chief Technology Officer here at the State Library and I work closely with Wendy on this project. And um, so just to build on all the excellent work that she's doing, on the other side of that work, I'm focused on the technology to make very, very sure that no one is left behind in terms of the digital divide. Um, and to make sure that everyone has access to the census um, in every place that we can possibly be. We've been very fortunate in that the Georgia legislature did earmark $1 million for library technology to aid in the preparation for the 2020 census. And that is part of a larger project that myself and my team manage called the LibTech Fund which is found on our website. And it's part of a public access technology fund that um, we manage every year to make sure that libraries across Georgia have current and um, ever expanding public access technology. So um, how we have managed the uh, funding for the census specific technology is on our website in great detail. Um, but just to go over it really quickly, basically we've been working with our libraries who um, are already really good at technology. They're really uh, brave and courageous and they're out there on the cutting edge anyway. So we just call them and say, you know, if they have any questions, we'll call them and, and say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And we'll work together to come up with a purchasing plan to make sure that they can use the technology to reach people in their communities. One of the focus uh, focuses, foci of uh, the libraries this year has been they really want to go out to the communities as well as attract people to the library. So we've seen a large uptick in tablets, laptops, cloud technology like Chromebooks, um, has been um, a real hit because um, the cloud books, Chrome and, and other cloud technology is really inexpensive and you can throw it all in a box and take it to a community center, to um, a nursing home, to um, we've had libraries partnering with departments of labor, departments of commerce, and just leaving the boxes of tech there for a week um, just so that those places can also reach people for the census. So we're happy to, you know, figure it out, to build the plane while we're flying, um, and also to beef up places in the library that could be used for the census, like meeting rooms and um, technology that could be used, like copiers and scanners. So we, um, our libraries are terrific about partnering with vendors and going out and finding good deals. So we're here to just support them in doing that. Okay, next slide. And also our libraries um, have had a lot of questions about the technology in particular for the census um, and coming from the patrons directly. And so I just wanted to highlight, this is a terrific page and I'll just put it in the chat box. There we go. And it answers a lot of questions that our libraries are getting from patrons about, um, is it safe? You know, um, they've heard lots of stuff about cybersecurity and um, um, data privacy. And so this just answers all those questions. And the short answer is um, the library is not responsible for it. Um, the security is all on the census end of things. So they're using two factor authentication, encryption, um, secure website technology so that they can prevent any of the, the problems that may happen. So this is just a really good page that answers all of those questions. So um, a lot of our libraries have this. Um, they've gone ahead and bookmarked it on their own sites. So I found this to be a great resource. And then finally, next slide. We've focused also on making sure that when you Google census, um, that our libraries are showing up as part of it. So if you Google Georgia Census, um, one of our library websites shows up on that front page. And so we've been working with the libraries to make sure that their websites with all of the good census information that's on them is findable. So here is a great resource for that. 
Um, just it's very uh, simple. It's Google, so they make it simple to um, make sure that you can plug your library site information into the right places so that you're immediately findable in your area. So we really are working on going out to the community with this technology, making sure the patrons know that the site is legitimate, it's safe, it's okay to do this, and making sure the patrons know that you can do this at your library. So happy to answer questions, but I'll stop there and uh, we'll have time for Q&A. We're all still here, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, I was I'm like, I'm like, it went, it got very it. quiet, and I'm like, uh oh, did <laughs> I lose everybody? Too. No. Um, so uh, again, thank you both, uh, Wendy and Emily, for those great ideas and talking about some specifics of what you're doing in Georgia. And we do want to move now to questions. So I. Uh, Caught, captured at least two questions that I saw, and I'm going to address those. Um, but if you have other questions or comments, please do feel free to put them in, in the chat box. And um, as I kind of respond to these questions, there are probably a couple of times I'm going to ask some of the panelists uh, to, to also add um, comments. And so, Kathy, uh, you need to get ready. Uh, one of the questions had to do with the uh, our, you know the languages, multiple languages in which census uh, materials and resources are going to be available in. And I can tell you that the guides, the guides to completing the census is going to be in 59 non-English languages, including American Sign Language, uh, as well as Braille and large print. Um, and the online census questionnaire will be available in at least 13 languages. And Kathy, I don't know if you want to maybe add to that a little bit. I know that some of the promotional materials are also in, I've seen them in uh -huh. a couple of languages. Yes, and uh, we posted the um, the resource materials, the printed resource materials uh, in the chat room. There are some of the materials that are available in multiple languages. Uh, I have just sent a, a, a Skype because in that library, it started out as a few materials and now it's just, uh, it's quite a bit of information. Uh, and we have about three languages that uh, we have uh, translated the English material, the print materials uh, too, and there are always more coming. So just, uh, I would encourage folks to uh, check that resource link, uh, but just don't have it, uh, just don't do it once, because um, as we progress through the, um, the census, when the need arises, and even that's in the queue, uh, there will be more added languages for the, the resource materials. And as Karen mentioned, uh, the questionnaire is going to be available in 13 languages as well as 59 uh, language guides. Okay. Another uh, question that came in in terms of libraries and outreach. Um, let's see, I think as Dean is asking, she says, we want to bring iPads out into the community in public forums to help folks complete their census forms. Do respondents need any census generated ID to complete their forms? How will the Census Bureau verify that respondents are who they say they are um, and it could have a huge impact but just want to get a sense of how that's being handled. Well we greatly appreciate the enthusiasm. We're hearing this from a number of organizations and unfortunately we are strongly discouraging um, people taking laptops to individuals and collecting their uh, personal information. Um, there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, safety, uh, uh, also, the, the uh, enumerators and all the census employees go through extensive training. Uh, we also take an oath that um, no information would ever be compromised or we will face 
uh, fines of $250,000 plus several years in jail. Um, and so we, what would be the options then to fill that void? Uh, we are uh, in the beginning stages of announcing uh, a mobile questionnaire assistance center. Um, this is going to be a data collection effort where enumerators will be taking around tablets to events. There is a layer of uh, library support in there. Uh, I can't speak to uh, how extensive that will be because they're just rolling out the, the presentation and the implementation of the program. Uh, but for library events, or if a library wants, uh, the they would contact the regions and the regions are going to decide how this data collection effort is going to proceed uh, with the guidance from headquarters. So that would be an option if you're hosting um, a come to the library and complete your questionnaire day. We would have uh, enumerators there. Um, if anybody uh, feels um, uh, very strongly about um, collecting the information, I would encourage you to apply for an enumerator position and then you can um, uh, work uh, in that um, arena under the uh, guidance of the, uh, the regional office. But again, thank you very much for the, um, the enthusiasm, but also as you can imagine, um, the, we're facing and building a, a pretty ro a very robust campaign around fraud, which we are expecting. We already know some that's happening. Uh, and so uh, surely people that do not have the best interest of the census in mind and have ulterior motives, uh, if we open the door for everybody to go out with tablets, um, that would also welcome um, some uh, not so positive responses from people that are uh, trying to uh, uh, conduct fraud. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. And just keep your mic open there because another question is, um, how is the census preparing to address incomplete responses? So there are populations that may be reticent to respond completely and honestly to certain questions for a variety of factors. Um, what is the percentage of incompletion that will be accepted? How, how is that being handled? So no one, um, there's a select few that knows the magic number of how many questions have to be completed. Obviously, we would like, this is, we have an opportunity to get a snapshot of the nation uh, once every 10 years. We strongly encourage all the questions to be answered. If people are uncomfortable, um, then that's their right to say, I'll answer nine of the 10, eight of the 10, um, and their questionnaire would still count. And in fact, if someone says, because part of the operation, when we go out for non-response follow-up, uh, if we see, uh, if we're at an address and someone says, I do not want you on my property again and please leave, we can record that if it's a male, we can record it as a male and count one. Uh, what will happen if there's only one question or two questions answered? Um, you do open the, ch increase the chances of having someone come back out, um, or give you a phone call. Um, I don't know what that number is. Uh, and um, I will tell you though, if you answer five of the questions, do we have the staff uh, to go out to everybody that you know submits a half completed questionnaire? No. Uh, will there be a random sample? Surely there will be. Uh, so um, it's, it's up to the individual uh, to, to complete as many answers as they are comfortable with. Uh, we say that this is, uh, I know it, it says that it's mandated by law. Um, I sometimes have a problem with that because I think that there might be a better approach that um, this is a civic responsibility, uh, just as we're going to be in the middle of a presidential campaign and as important as voting is. Uh, completing the census, census questionnaire uh, is also a way for, for you to serve, um, you know, the nation and your community and making sure that your count so that the funds can be distributed into your uh, communities uh, for your libraries and hospitals and schools. Okay, thank you. Somebody was also wondering, and this may uh, be uh, something others besides Kathy may be able to respond to, do people in rural areas tend to trust libraries, um, see them as a go-to resource more than other community centers? Do we know, um, I know in general, libraries are thought of as trusted institutions in a community, but any, do we have any data regarding rural libraries in particular? 
Hi, Karen. Um, I answered a little bit in the chat, um, and I would say that what we know from the data is that um, libraries, other than like nursing, is the most trusted uh, profession and institution in most communities. Um, and I believe that's true um, for rural as well as urban and suburban. Um, we know that for rural communities, they um, look to the library for more resources because there is less competition, if you will, in rural communities. So I think libraries often play a more central role in their communities, particularly in terms of public access to the internet and programming because there aren't as many other options in you know, lower population areas. So the library can play a more central role in the community relative to a city that might have other, you know, theater programs and, and other uh, public access sites. Okay, um, and I see a number of questions coming up about the um, laptops and mobile devices. And so I think that's something that um, we'll try and kind of clarify. And maybe if you have specific questions, um, you can uh, contact uh, probably Gavin or Lara so we can kind of sort through them. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated um, topic, uh, but also, you know, you will have patrons coming into your libraries. And I see from Emily that um, when, when patrons come into your libraries, absolutely, can you, can you remind them? Can you show them a website? You can absolutely direct them. It, the line comes in collecting personal information. Um, so uh, I'm happy to join any other conversation to do a deeper dive into that for clarity. Great, thank you. And and clearly, it's a it's an issue that's raising some questions. So we'll uh, do our best to to address it. Um, since we are coming to the top of the hour, and I want to um, respect everybody's time, wanted to let you know um, that there is another webinar scheduled for December 16th: Library Programs and Partnerships in the 2020. Census and that particular webinar, which is on December 16th, is going to really focus on outreach, collaborative activities, working with different um, groups within a kind of local uh, groups and organizations. Uh, if you are interested in the webinar that focused specifically on connecting your community to 2020 census jobs and the kind of hiring efforts that are going on, there's now a recording available. And uh, there will be shortly a recording of this one as well. Um, the go-to source for ALA for sheets, resources, materials, a generic set of, of PowerPoint slides uh, is ala.org slash census. Um, and also, if you do have specific questions um, related to topics that we didn't have a chance to respond to, uh, please do feel free to contact Lara or Gavin or me. So again, I want to take uh, time to thank everybody, all of our presenters, great information uh, about how, what libraries are doing. And uh, thank you, Kathy, for uh, helping libraries understand how they can connect with uh, census and partnership specialists. Uh, and so that brings us to the conclusion of the webinar.